Attention sleepless nights. Thank you for consuming this OSI 74 product broadcast live from the Black Knight satellite. For optimum performance and safety, your host, Mr. Lobo, asks that you please listen to these instructions carefully. When in a hospital or other healthcare facility, observe the restrictions on the use of electronic devices. Switch off before boarding an aircraft to prevent interference with communication systems. Do not operate this device in the presence of flammable gases or fumes, chemical plants, or where blasting operations are in progress. Always listen hands-free while driving a vehicle. Failure to observe these instructions may lead to immediate termination. It's time now for the show to begin. Thank you. Have a very pleasant evening. Greetings, true believers. You're not dreaming. This is the Sleepless Nights podcast from Williamsport Comic Con, USA. That's what Lobo would have said if he was here. Paul, I am here. Oh, thank God. I am here. <laughs> Why did you make a show without telling me? I don't Paul? know. I think I made a mistake. I did think you I have made, a stroke? I think I made a bad mistake. Oh my goodness! Least worst, least listened to episode ever. I knew I was in trouble when the first, as soon as it went up, it went thumbs down. Oh, <laughs> well, you know, I mean, when you decrease the number of hosts by fifty percent, <laughs> you can't really is, necessarily increase the ratings, can you? Is it is it decreased uh, uh, by fifty percent when you count Miss Mittens? Oh well, Wouldn't that be a third. I guess by a third. Miss Mittens, though, um, isn't always on the podcast. Miss Mittens is kind of like a special guest, don't you think so? Sort I guess. Of? A special plotted. Potted? Potted. Guess. Potted. Plotted. Plotted? Plotted. Potted. I don't know. Planted, planted. perhaps. Planted. She's planted. How about we tell everybody where we're at? I think I said Williamsport Comic Con, which is in Pennsylvania. Well, I don't think we got that through the first time. You want to try that again? We didn't get that through? Oh. Oh, you just said that, didn't you? I did say it just now. Again, I think we've said it three times now. I missed Williamsport it. Comic Con, and now I think that might be a fourth. Okay, all right. We're having such a great time here. Uh, I, we're staying here at the is it Genetti or Genetti Hotel? Genetti. 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 The uh, GPS one cannot n find it. two T's. Genetti Hotel in Williamsport. These guys know how to put on a show. There's 35 or more vendors here. Uh, there's special guests, people signing autographs. Mr. Lobo's here. And uh, nobody wants my autograph whatsoever. Paul, you I'm like, I was on a podcast that. by myself. and That's true. I had to pay somebody 10 bucks to take my <laughs> autograph. <laughs> well, you know, I, Paul, um, yeah, I don't know what to say about that, Paul. I, you know, the less we talk about the episode <laughs> that you did by yourself, Is it the lost the episode? Better. Would it still be considered? It was lost almost it the was last still, episode. You know, it was still airing. It was still the uh, last episode. Yeah. It was maybe ignored more the than ignored it was episode. lost. <laughs> I think I like that. The ignored episode. Uh, uh, I think you're making a sale over there. Am I? Oh, someone's yeah. buying. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Good. I hope they enjoy it. Um, we're both running tables with the family. We, oh, yeah. We didn't talk about that part. We are actually at the tables. Uh, uh, there, we are sitting at an eight-foot convention table with lovely red um, uh, uh, spread on it, or uh, tablecloth, I should say. That's the, that's the industry term, tablecloth. 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 Even when it's plastic, it's still a tablecloth. A tablecloth, cl- cloth. yeah, that's because it, it's an industry term. It's union. Which industry? It's the con- conventioning, okay. huckstering industry. <laughs> So, uh, if you're a professional huckster, so we are in the huckster's room here, a uh, beautiful ballroom with sh- glass chandeliers um, and uh, all sorts of uh, curtains, and, and it's beautiful. It's a beautiful hotel, very haunted hotel. Spent the night uh, in, in the, at the Ginetti Hotel last night. Mm-hmm. We had a mysterious occurrence happen <laughs> at 5 in the morning. 505. So it looked like it looked like it said SOS on the phone. Our alarm supposedly went off. We could hear it. Blum 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 blum. Blum 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 blum. Which is what everybody, I guess everybody chooses that because that's the least objectionable 
a ringtone to wake up to that you don't have to pay for, right? Right. So this thing goes off and it's not our phone. We just hear this sound. So we think maybe it's Dylan's phone and it's not Dylan's phone. At least, and then, at least and you didn't have the default setting that I have on mine, which is the wee, oh, which would have no. really been that eerie. That really would have been eerie. Scary. And then someone's wa- we hear someone walking down the hall and they're whistling our ringtone <laughs> going down the hall at three at 5.05 in the morning. And the funny thing is you opened up the door and nobody was out there. It, it was true. Nobody mm-hmm. was out there. was there. just a, a, a flaming bag <laughs> in front of the door that I stomped out. And they're uh, like, hey, why is there one of my DVDs in here? Yeah. <laughs> it smelled like one of my DVDs. <laughs> so... Um, we, we, uh, so that was our weird occurrence. And then I tried to go back to sleep and I don't know why I just didn't find the remote and turn the damn TV off, but we had the TV on real low. Dixie likes some noise in the room and, uh, uh, freaking, uh, uh, dusk till dawn three, the hangman's daughter was on and apparently dusk to dawn, the, the electric boogaloo. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Citizens on patrol. Uh, yes. Mission to Moscow. <laughs> So they had, they, I feel like that there's strobes happening in that movie, like every 20 seconds. Like whoever was in charge of lightning on that movie was just hitting the button uh, constantly. The audience, um, fo- you know, this, the plot's really thin at this part. We'll just put a lot of flashes. A lot of flashing, yeah. If they, they will be so busy having a seizure that they won't notice that there's no plot to this movie. So, uh, in, so, in Death of Dawn 3 is one of the directed DVDs. Yeah, it? I think so. Directed DVD. That was one of those movies where you're really surprised. So, it might as well be a mission to Moscow. Where, <laughs> where it sneaks up on you. Like, I felt that way about Land Before Time, where you're in a video store and it's like, Land Before Time 8, you know, the mission to what? <laughs> mission to Moscow? No. Um, uh, what, you know, what did Land Behind Land Before Time get to 8 somehow without me knowing about it? Um, uh, anyway, uh, so uh, we watched, um, what was it? Uh, so that movie was on, and it's just gunshots screaming and strobing for two hours. And uh, so I couldn't get back to sleep. And then uh, at 7 in the morning, it was time to get up and start the show. And so we went How you down. How doing, sir? Uh, and uh, uh, we met with Joe Figured. Is it Figured or Figured? Or Figured? figured. Or Fingered? I don't know. Isn't he down? He's... I- he was down table. Below. He is the gentleman who, if you watch uh, Mr. Lobo does free comic book day, he is the, one of the proprietors of the Isle of Comics in that now legendary YouTube video. Legendary. Um, uh, by Besto TV. Mr. Who? Lobo, D- Besto TV. There's a giant <laughs> banner right behind you, Paul. It says Besto TV. Oh, where the hell did that um, come from? And I have a giant banner that says Cinema Insomnia with your host, Mr. Lobo. And what I like about that is people come up to me and go, Are you Mr. Lobo? <laughs> And I would think that having the giant banner would allow you to skip that first question. Right. No. No, they will I think, always... I think when you introduce yourself as Lou Ferrigno, it throws everybody uh, Ah, yes. You know, yes. Lou Ferrigno. No, Paul. <laughs> Paul. <laughs> we... <laughs> He's not going to hear this. <laughs> but we're going to get letters done the last. Yeah. Uh, uh, yes. Yes, Lou Ferrigno is not going to hear this podcast, so we can openly mock his Correct. bad hearing. Right, because he's and, not going to hear this the podcast fact that he either can't direction. Hear the tone of the tone of his own voice. Yeah, we're going to hell. Uh, well, it's I terrible. think we've established that a lot. I guess that was many, many, ago. many episodes ago. But we're having a great d- time today. We're selling, uh, moving a lot of product. We've got uh, uh, DVDs. We've got. Um, uh, think, is this a, a French fry that's uh, coming? Down bizarre down? transmissions. Is this a French fry? Giant. Uh, is it French fries? No, it's exotic bowl butter from Five Nights at Freddy's. Oh! Exotic butter from FNAF 6 sister, sister location. Oh! And now you know. Wow, so we have an exotic bowl of butter. We have butter. Exciting. And then we have a TARDIS. Mm-hmm. And a mosquito. Uh, and a mosquito. with And the, and, and a, a, are the ketchup packets are, are blood for the mosquito? Excellent. There's a bandolier strap on the mosquito, sort of a Chewbacca-style bandolier strap made of ketchup packets, for those of you listening in at home. For those who can't see this. And then a long, uh, long proboscis on this mosquito. I would say maybe a three-foot proboscis yeah. on that I think, mosquito. I think when they're done with the show, they can go out there and go... Yeah, mm-hmm. amazing. Very creative. You're there. Lovely costumes. 
Yes, we're we doing are. it right now. Yes. Hey, say yes. hi. Be on the podcast. Hey, how you doing, folks? We're having a great time up here at the Williamsport Comic Con. Stop by and uh, everything fifty percent off. Er- oh, no, yes. no, I don't know about Riots that. Riots no. are going to start <clears throat> right now. Okay, wow. See, that's what we get when we just let the general public yeah. use a microphone. You end up with Chris. Mm-hmm. That's right. <laughs> we have Sailor Moon. There we go. Hello, Sailor Moon. Sailor Moon's ignoring you. It's, uh, that always happens. Hello, Hi. Sailor Moon. Hi, Sailor Moon. Say hello. How are you? Hello. How are y'all? How are y'all doing today? Very good. Did, did, did Sailor Moon say y'all? I think y'all. He said, Sailor Moon said y'all a lot, right? <laughs> yeah. which, which iteration is that? is that? Was that in the original Japanese version, y'all? <laughs> We're just gonna do the play-by-play of everybody that walks by the table. Uh, well, for the next, y- next yeah, we hour. could we could like the Rose Bowl parade <laughs> where we can kind of yes, exactly. <laughs> How did yes. you get a float in here? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, the French fry. Uh, what well, was the French fry? Bowl, it was butter. An exotic bowl of it was, butter. It was an exotic was. bowl yes. of butter from, Five Nights, from Five Nights at Freddy's. You gotta tune into the podcast. Oh wow! Wow! So your your brother got to meet Chili Billy Cardill? That's incredible. That is that is like one of the most. I, I mean, he got to be in a legendary movie. That movie will never die. So what was this made? This was made in uh, Rona. Okay. Oh, okay. Very cool. Wow, that's no hauntings or anything while you guys scary. were on set. Lots of hauntings. Lots of hauntings. Yes. Oh, okay. Awesome. Constant we're haunting. gonna get this. Can Make sign the cover for me. Yes. Yeah, for sure. I'd love a love signature. I'd like a. All right, we're gonna take a break. Uh, Mr. Love is gonna sign another autograph, and we will be back with more sleepless nights of insomnia. Plan 9 from Outer Space is probably my favorite uh, 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 misunderstood movie uh, because when I watch it, it always feels like it's 3 in the morning. And I, I, I like that feeling. Maybe it's because you watch it at 3 in the morning. That could be it. But this is actually the remake that I was cast in. Um, uh, that is me, yeah. Uh, they made a remake, uh, 2016, a remake came out. And um, uh, I... So, I've been involved with presenting Ed Wood's movies and Plan 9 on my show Cinema Insomnia and uh, I have kind of an association with misunderstood movies so when they remade Plan 9 they invited me to play Criswell who was kind of like the in the original he was kind of the spectral narrator he sort of was telling the story of Plan 9 from outer space and in this version Criswell is jumping on top of cars killing zombies with a with an with an axe hashtag not sponsored yeah Hashtag plug. Mr. Lobo just finished uh, another satisfied customer, just signed an autograph copy. Now, um, we had a, a mother and daughter team. Yeah, uh, I was going to say, we can give the highlights because I'm not sure how much the audio picked that, up from That's uh, fine. The highlight one, so. of that was uh, um, that they both enjoyed horror movies. Mom was into the classic stuff that used imagination more. Uh, but and they, Sailor Moon was into. And Sailor Moon was into gore. Okay. Wanted to see the blood and guts, and uh, and there and, and both are valid. You know, I think you need a little bit of both. Um, there's two ways of telling a story. You know, there's one where you know the audience uh, is has to suspend their disbelief, or perhaps is is more mentally engaged to to bring something to the experience, and uh, another one where you just lay back and let it wash over you. Um, and on my end, I was watching everybody. You know, this has been happening all day. Yeah. As they go over there, and I got a box full of Star Wars toys, and they pull out the first one, which is Bib Fortuna. <laughs> laugh at it and put it back. See, I get a, I laugh when I hear Bib Fortuna. Yeah, Bib Fortuna was Jabba the Hutt's uh, right hand man. Yeah, he was Slave Leia before Slave Leia was Slave Leia. Yeah, yeah, I should have seen him in the bikini. <laughs> um, but he's got Maybe that he, was the bikini. He's got weird, uh, uh, l- l- weird legs coming off his head. <laughs> Um, Are you sure you don't have, he doesn't have a weird head coming off I guess off his he's legs. got tentacles coming off his... Testicles? No, tentacles, Paul. Oh. Coming okay. off his head. 
uh, and uh, uh, he is a weird-looking dude. Not, not, no one's favorite Star Wars character. Well, it could be somebody's favorite. I have, uh, somewhere every, I have every person, every character is probably someone's. Like favorite, Stan Lee said, but not a famous, not famously popular character. I think I have, uh, I have him carded. Uh, are there autographed a, of that? Actor. Are there a I've whole? I've had that actor. Are there a, a whole? Uh, is there a whole like Bib Fortuna fan club? There should be. Yeah. If there isn't, there should be. Okay. I just it's it, it sounds like something that you would get like at a seafood place. I need a Bib Fortuna. I, I need the Bib Fortuna. Yeah, because I'm gonna dribble. You never I'm gonna, the I'm, it's gonna dribble on my chest if I'm not wearing my <laughs> Bib Fortuna. Um. So um, we where are we where, so I guess we finished talking to some folks. They had some fun. They bought a DVD, uh, Sailor Moon and Mom, and they bought uh, the Plan um, Nine. If, they bought, if, the, that, bought the if Plan that was Nine. cut off of the oh, and her intro brother. And that was the other thing is that um, the, the mother's brother was. Uh, in the film Night of the Living Dead and got to work with Chili Billy Cardilly which, who, who was which another version? horror host the original the original okay the original Night of the Living Dead and got to and got to meet Chili Billy Cardilly who was a horror host out of Pittsburgh sure so you don't know who Chili Billy Cardilly is okay <laughs> He was he was one of see see Mr. Lobo is uh, well it's weird because there are two kinds no. of horror. Now here's movie where hosts. We, we're, how about we start Mr. Lobo explains. Mr. Lobo explains. <laughs> A new segment Mr. Lobo explains ready and action. This is another edition of Mr. Lobo explains. <laughs> I'm going to explain uh, Chili Billy Cardilly for you. Um, across the country we had horror movie hosts and uh, these were basically. Uh, uh, Every local market and te- uh, local television market would have a colorful character that would present broken down old movies on TV, and a lot of them were dressed as vampires and mad scientists. But B- Chili Billy was one of the sort of normal guys. I kind of fall into that category. Bob Wilkins falls into that category. But as the much rarer version of the horror movie host, where you are kind of more of an amplified version of yourself than maybe a guy who's a vampire or a mad scientist. But uh, Chili Billy, uh, uh, the, the people who made Night of the Living Dead were fans of his horror show. I think it was Chiller Theater uh, in Pittsburgh. And when they made Night of the Living Dead, they had to put their favorite horror movie host in their movie um, because that's who they were and that's how they grew up. Same with uh, the movie Plan 9, the new movie Plan 9, the remake. Um, um, I'm a horror movie host. I have a television program where I present uh, uh, broken down horror movies, and broken down horror movie fans grow up to make movies and put their favorite horror hosts in them, and that's how I got my role in Plan Nine. So that is this edition of Mr. Lobo Explains. And now, now do we do the roll out the uh, the uh, um, Serbisto responds? Yeah, sure. Serbisto responds. Right, so here's the edition of Sur- Serbisto responds. Who? And that was another edition of Service Doe Responds. Yes, excellent. <laughs> no one cares, ultimately. Sure. So, sure. <laughs> um, but we are, we are having a, a, a good time today. We got a lot of uh, fans here who are um, happy to see Mr. Lobo, which is We should is podcast nice. more often. We get a lot of traffic when we podcast. Yeah, I think, I think it dro- <laughs> maybe it attracts a crowd, uh, perhaps, sort of, I guess. And maybe the lack of pants. Uh, well, Paul, I don't know if they can tell that you're not wearing pants. Do I uh, need to stand up? No, <laughs> no, do not stand up, Paul. Please. I think it's a felony if I stand up. So, um, <laughs> yes, I think so. There are miners present, so please do not. Miners? But, um, yeah, they're digging some jewels. Explain the hat. Minecraft fans. <laughs> so, um, anyway, we we're, we uh, basically just finished uh, uh, with talking to some good folks. And there's Dixie. Dixie, do you have something to say? Negative. Awesome. Uh, yeah. Thanks, Dixie. Uh, Dixie has a lot of her Riveting. artwork here. <laughs> yes. She's got her Stay Young the Vampire Way uh, pins. And she's got her VHS uh, kind of Nagel. It looks like a Nagel girl as a VHS as a pin. She's got boxes that she made uh, that she's painted, hand-painted boxes with popular characters on them. And uh, her posters. You know, and uh, so come down here and buy them today. Even though probably by the time this airs, it'll be three weeks from now. Yeah, probably won't hear it, but probably <laughs> it'll probably be an empty hotel <laughs> if you do hear it. 
Um, but uh, if you come over here, it well, might not be an empty hotel, but there won't be a convention <laughs> happening well, on might the day be a you're convention, hearing It might that. be a different convention. That's true. It might, might be a gun show. It could be a gun could show. Be a gun show. Uh, could be. Yes. Uh, it's always like dolls, guns, coins. I always felt like they should add like mental health professionals to that. You know what I mean? Like, could be like a job psychiatric fair. help. Like, like <laughs> guns, dolls, coins, and psychiatric analysis. <laughs> For what? For change? And we're yes. getting, this point of the uh, segment you know, is where Dylan gets changed. Dylan needs change, so, so maybe should we go to a break? Do, is it do, too? Do, can, do, we, can it, can do, it be do. one of those things? Can we go to a break? Sure, let's go to a break. <laughs> All right. Sorry, we need change, so we're going to go to a break. Thanks for listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast. From the Monte Carlo Grand Prix to the Bazaar of Istanbul, nothing stops me. I want it. You think I got it? That uncertainty, Dostum Black, is the only reason you're still alive. He knows more ways than one how to make it with a buck or a broad. How to make it with pussycats or tigers. Vic Morrow, Suzanne Plachet, Michael Ansari, Cesar Romero, Victor Bono, and Stanley Holloway. They don't care who they kill to get what they want. And then there are those who won't cooperate. This picture will turn you every way but loose. How to make it. In color. Okay, we had to take a little break yeah. there. Yeah, I, I got to explain to you what the mixed shits are. You know what the mixed shits are? Have you ever heard that? Can I say Mick uh, shits? No, you can't say Mick But shits. it has Mick in front of it. <laughs> it's still, it's not the Mick part that's the problem. How about Mick squirts? Is that better? Mick squirts, all right. But that, yes. think that's kind of a little bit too gross. Is it too graphic? The Mick, uh, uh, how about we vote below in the comments? About, Which do you like, Mick squirts? <laughs> and I can't say it because there's a kid in front of us. Uh, I don't know. Mick shits or Mick squirts? Yeah. Vote below. Okay, so so someone explained them to you? Did you need it explaining? No, no, no. Because it need, seems no. self-explanatory. No, I mean, vote below which one you prefer. Yes, but I mean, you said someone explained it to you. No, should I explain it to you? Oh, no. The, you, you know what the McDonald's Yeah, so you guys had McDonald's are. breakfast. <laughs> yes. Yes, we had the number two, and now I'm going to leave the number two somewhere else. That's great. <laughs> I, you always class up the, this podcast. I got I to I put it up to the next level. Yeah. You know, this is what happens when you're not around. Oh, man. Uh, I might not come back the next time. So um, we, we are still here, of course, at Williamsport uh, Comic Con. Um, uh, my, my son, Dylan, uh, sold a, um, another uh, one of his books. He published a book that's a zine based on um, uh, I, Mob uh, Psycho 100, I think. Is that what it is? Mob Psycho 100. Tell us about the book. Yeah. Um, it's a book for an anime called Mob Psycho 100. I made okay. it like last year with two of my other friends, and we got like 80 something no. pre-orders on it, which was fun. Sorry that. Cool. Is that it? I guess so. I don't know what to say about it. What did you raise money for charity? Yeah, I raised money for an LGBT center in California. Um, and yeah. So what have you have you been selling? Uh, just your book, or you have your art art too? Uh, well, we have the book, and then there's a sticker set and a keychain that can come with it if you want. And then I also have a couple of prints from Danganronpa. Excellent. Dylan's a very talented artist. We're excited that he's doing the show with us today. Thank you. Done? Yes. All right. Well, that was not awkward. There we go. Not <laughs> awkward at all. No dead air whatsoever. <laughs> Uh, and then, and Dil Dylan, here's your five bucks. But I'm, gonna, but that's your on-air fee, so I'm keeping that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, for your plug, for your book. That's your advertisement fee. Um, so uh, we're all square now. Yeah. Now, I, now, Dylan, now, Dylan's got all my money. Now, now, my kid, on the other hand, she's already outsold me. I've got the most amount of real estate. I have the most amount of stuff out there, and my daughter has outsold. I think me Dylan's either. doing pretty good too. Between selling the books and the and the prints, he's doing Not pretty to get well. Not money matters, but. You know? <laughs> nice. That's nice. See, I told you those prints were a good idea. Re explain it because I don't think that was on the, on the mic. Oh, okay. Uh, um, was it Kyra's friends? Kyra's friends, your friends. 
Kyra brought some friends say over. Say that into the mic. Oh, somebody, I don't know them, but oh, okay. somebody came and like brought a bunch of their friends over and was like, hey, buy these things. So that was nice. Cause okay, so, you, you, so you, you found a little booster, someone who just said, hey, hey, th check this out and buy this. That's good. That's, you know, we need more people like that. People who will, who, who will, who will uh, bully their friends into buying things. Yeah, because if I would do that, I think that's also a felony. <laughs> I would go to jail if I was out there beating up twelve-year-olds. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you have to. You have to. You, we, have to we have to. We have to. You know, what, like once shame on me. <laughs> Seven or eight, shame on me as well. But like uh, ten or eleven, yeah. I learned my lesson. Be beating up on teenagers, I think, is reserved for Hollywood big shots. We're not quite drunk there dads. yet. And yes, mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's too early in the day to be a drunk dad. It's never too early. You're in central <laughs> Pennsylvania. You do know where you're at, right? <laughs> Damn kids. Oh, man. He's got some learns. Mm. Now, someone said I was the Tony Stark of horror hosts. What does that mean? I, Can you? Does I, that make any sense? Um, because you go out at night as Iron Man? Um, I don't, Although you're, I don't, if you're a horror iron, house, I don't even iron you, my pants. You would go out during the day because you at night you would be the horror host. So I guess... Yeah, I don't know. I think it's I think it's is the it, idea of Is it because being, you're a millionaire? I think it's because I'm a mess and I wear a suit. It's because you're an alcoholic. It's a demon in the bottle. Uh, it's not the al from. I'm not an alcoholic, but I, I Oh you finally kicked that? Socially maladjusted. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Love was a famous teetotaler, you know that. Criswell's a drunk. Criswell, if you watch Plan Nine, Criswell plays a mean drunk. Look, look here, uh, some more people for, for Dylan. A lot of people, a lot of people who are coming probably just for Dylan's <laughs> art and book. Um, but we are, um, we've got um, magnets, stickers, magnets, buttons, buttons, t-shirts, um, OSI 74, and a lot of this stuff we gave to our Patreon supporters, and we want to uh, probably should take this moment to thank. All right, hey, Doctor Strange. Strange. Excellent. Thank you for keeping the multiverse safe. Yes. Sim Sim Salabim. Mm -hmm. No, no, that's wrong. Kazam, Kazam, <laughs> Shazam, isn't it? Shazam? No, no, I think all those are wrong. <laughs> Yabble dabble. Yabble dabble. <laughs> Thank you for letting us insult you, sir. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Metaphors be with you. <laughs> Metaphors. Mm. <laughs> uh, all right. So uh, we doctors. That was Doctor Strange, ladies yes, and gentlemen. That was, that was strange. I have Agamotto. Right, that's Doctor Strange. Uh, sure. Yeah. 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 Sure. Um, when I was a kid, yes. I had the. Um, did you ever heard the? You were strange when you were a kid. Well, I was. Yeah. But the, they, I had the album where it was. It was a Spider-Man rock opera. Mm. It was called a rock comic, and it was Spider-Man and Doctor Strange versus um, the penguin. Or the penguin. <laughs> penguin? <laughs> no, Kingpin. I can see why this. I see why this Tang record time. came out in Iraq. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Dixie's putting ones in Lobo's pants. We're getting the play-by-play. -play. Making it rain. <laughs> it's hard to make with, it rain with pennies. With ones. Oh, with pennies. It hurts. Pennies from heaven. Ow, 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 ow. <laughs> oh, damn. So, damn, kids. Uh, oh, 12 o'clock door, door prize. prize. Another hour went by. <laughs> we only recorded 12 minutes. <laughs> How does that? Because we're busy, man. You know, <laughs> we're doing our work and we're, we're multitasking. We're trying to create content and sell the merchandise for said content at the same time. And produce a show. <laughs> and produce a show. So um, we're, um, uh, we. hey, how are you? Uh, How you doing? Now you look like a detective. Are you a detective? John Constantine. Oh, John Constantine. And Black Canary. A Black Canary. Okay. Of course. And that's Matt. Hi, Hi Matt. Matt. How are you? <laughs> I don't know. If he Matt just looks like a, he looks like just a steampunk uh, jeweler. Is that what? Is that his character? Uh, uh, sure. Okay. We'll go with that. You look great. You're uh, you're nerdcore, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Nerdcore? Yeah, he was in Free Comic Book Day. Oh, okay. Yeah, he does a podcast, yeah. too. Yes, of course. You want to do a crossover? Oh, yeah, Here, a, say something. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you look different without You look different without the glasses. Look, look different without the glasses and the blonde hair now. Mm, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, uh, was doing comic booksters. That's on hiatus right now. Right now we're doing an Instagram project called uh, Comics in Kauai between me and Kiki here. So excellent. Uh, yeah. Well, thank you Hashtag so much, plugged. and thanks for having us. Uh, uh, I guess we we were on, you were on Free Comic Book free Day. Comic Mr. Book Lobo does Free Comic Book Day, and we talked a little bit about how we felt about Free Comics yes, Book yes, Day. Yes. Yeah, that was nice. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for 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 being on that show with us, and and I guess thanks for being on this show too. And I'm glad I wasn't wrong because I'll be like, hey, look, it's the it's the comic book store. Yeah, and he's like, what? What? What the hell's that? <laughs> <laughs> the show. Thank you very much. Oh. Very nice meeting you. you. Black Canary. Black Canary. Mm -hmm. Yes. Right. Stunning. All right. So, uh, and this guy has an L on his shirt. Is he Laverne? That's kind of, I think that that who he's what? trying to be. Where? He's facing the other way now, but he's just, he's got a black bowling shirt with an L on it. So I'm thinking he's like Laverne from Laverne and Shirley. I don't know. Sure. You no. Know? Yeah. <laughs> Can we talk about horror hosts some more? Can we do another Mr. Lobo Explains? Um, I mean, I guess I guess we got to to. to this is an earth. This is really right. obscure. Now for another another segment of Mr. Lobo explains. This is a very special a special edition of Mr. Lobo explains because this is something that I want someone to explain to me. Oh, that guy with the L on his shirt. Uh, uh, now Laverne and Shirley, of course, was a very popular uh, uh, on the heels of Happy Days, a spinoff where uh, two of the characters who were briefly on Happy Days spun off and had their own show. They were roommates. It was Pam. Uh, no, no, it was uh, what was her? To pay, uh, what was the two uh, actor and actress? Damn it! Um, famous Penny Marshall. Penny Marshall's famous director and um, uh, gosh darn it! Hide your Pokemon. Here's sure. Team uh, uh, oh gosh. Oh, I can't think of their names right now. Yeah, we don't have any. We don't have any. Move don't along. worry. <laughs> Move along. These aren't the Pokemon you're These looking aren't for. These are the Pokemon you're looking for. Uh, we have Team Rocket here giving us the eye, hairy eyeball. I know eyeball. Giovanni. It's so cool. It's um, okay. What I was going to say about Laverne and Shirley real quick is that on that show, it was very popular and very funny for a while. And then they moved to California. And then Laverne left the show. So then it was just Shirley by herself in California, which had nothing to do with anything that was happening on that show. Uh and then uh, they introduced a character named Rhonda. And Rhonda pretty much did exactly the shtick of Rhonda Shear on Up All Night, who is another horror movie host. Um, and he would say, uh, she would say, Rhonda this and Rhonda that and Rhonda the other. And she would have like cherry earrings and, and you know, big blonde hair and talked about herself in the third person. And Rhonda Shear seems to be doing exactly the shtick of that character from Laverne and Shirley. And I don't know if that's the same actress, if that is Rhonda Shear on those old episodes of Laverne and Shirley, or if it's a totally different actress, or if one inspired the other, or if it's just a happy accident. So if anyone has any information about Rhonda Shear versus the character Rhonda on the later episodes of Laverne and Shirley, uh, uh, please contact the, the police immediately. Now for an edition of Surface Over Spawns. Who? <laughs> and that was another edition of Surface Over Spawns. There we go. This is just like our real conversations. <laughs> it's, it's no mm -hmm. different. No different. No different. Absolutely no different. I think you're about um, to make a sale, so how about we uh, we go for a break and all right. you sell that DVD? I will, we'll, I'll do my best, and we'll be back with more Sleepless Nights of Insomnia. The fine family-run space for oddities, collectibles, retro kitsch, antiques. Don't you mean eclectic crap? Uh, we'd like to say one-of-a-kind items, Paul. Ah, ah. Area 707. That's Area 707. Located inside Cackleberry Antique Mall in Paradise, Pennsylvania. Please visit our Facebook page, facebook.com slash area 707 PA. That's facebook.com slash area 707 PA. Come see us. There's cinema and Sonia merchandise there too, and uh, it collected crap. That's right, at area 707. Hey, Mr. Lobo. I, oh, Paul, what's I, up? I have a question here about this 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 memo that I got from you. It says that Besto TV now needs a commercial. Oh, whoever wrote that should get fired, I think. I'm not quite sure what to put into said commercial. Uh, for Besto TV, I mean, you know, you just talk about your channel. Like Creative Continuity and its sister show, Bonus Content? Right, all the convention culture and the interviews with celebrities and all that stuff, sure.
Well, I guess I could also mention the cosplay montages, costumes. Costumes, right. Uh, astonishing cosplay montage set to an epic soundtrack. I, I guess there's Convention Rewind, too. Those are great. We've run those on OSI 74. So I guess that's all I need, so I, I guess I'll... Have to... Are you sure? Because there's, I think there's one other show that you produced for that for Evesto. I, I, I don't know what you're talking about. With, with Mr. Lobo. Yeah, what but that we do together, the thing that we do. Remember all those videos we did? Oh, like Mr. Lobo does. Yes, yes, Mr. Lobo does, of course. That's awesome. I'm going to get right on this. I'm going to write up the script. Hey, wait, Paul. You forgot to tell him to go to besto.tv. Idiot. I mean, it's not, it's not like the first time we've went over or anything. Oh, we're live, by the way. <laughs> oh, we're running. Yes. Wow. Uh, so Mike came, and he bought a copy of Cinema Insomnia Atomic Brain. Thank you, Mike. Uh, thank you, Mike. And that is that is on DVD. Um, uh, so a digital, versatile disc. See that? There's more people down there laughing at Bib Fortuna. Uh, you know, people are just going to keep laughing at Bib Fortuna <laughs> all day, Paul. I think you need to put Luke or somebody up front. I think that was Maybe. a good idea. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, the thing is, they... they Bib Fortuna catches their attention. They look at it, but yes. then they don't go through the rest of the It's a conversation box. starter, <laughs> but then they have no respect for you, and yeah, they don't want to like, buy yeah, anything from you. Has Bib Fortuna. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we, uh, yeah, so Mike, Mike is a horror host fan. He had a vampire horror host growing up uh, who presented uh, sci-fi and horror movies to him, but he doesn't remember that guy's name. So if you live in, uh, I guess, the Williamsport area, and you remember a vampire on television. I guess what Mike looked what? He was in his 30s or something? What would you think, Mike? How old do you think Mike was? Sure. All right, sure. <laughs> so a guy who might be in his 30s or so. Um, uh, so. Grew, uh, grew up in the Williamsport area. I was kind of running had for a, change. So I didn't had really a vampire as their local, their local horror movie host, you know? Um, but uh, things have been pretty busy here. We've been moving a lot of DVDs. Um, We've people decided been wanting that the, autographs. Best, the best way to make sales is just start rolling on the podcast. Yeah, pretty much once you start ignoring people, <laughs> that's when they want to buy stuff from you. So we're just going to keep doing the podcast. And if somebody's interested in something, we will we will take a break. Yes. Um, but um, uh, with that being said, and we, we kind of kind of ramble through is I think we've lost count of our minutes and what seg segments we are in. So it, this it, might it, be a little it, bit extra. It is um, a little bit of a challenge. We, I know we're, we're going to be missing a week. Uh, you know, sorry, folks. It's but, an uh, extra. It's, you know, a, a it, more. if you get a little oh, extra show. Thank you. Right. Back if you get a little bit like of usual. an extra show, uh, then that's people, not too bad. Hopefully, we don't shortchange you and do like a segment less. I yeah. don't think so, though. People think people heard. Thank you. Thank you. People heard Someone Lou just Ferrigno was here. Can I say that? take three? People heard that Lou Ferrigno is here and they're rushing to this table. <laughs> Why is he behind Ron? Der <laughs> Ron Burgundy. Ron Burgundy. <laughs> <laughs> um, we were at one show and we had two people that thought Mr. Lobo was Ron Burgundy. I guess yeah. we said that. We on talked the about that on the podcast. Yes. Yeah, that was that, the, it was that's the other thing that's funny is we don't ever remember what we've already <laughs> talked to on the podcast. So if there's something that it seems like we talk about too much or if something that seems like uh, there's a redundancy with the podcast, we apologize because we really, unfortunately, I don't know if there's something wrong with us mentally. Oh, that's probably true. Well, I think. But we, we re don't really remember things that we've talked about or remember whether we've talked about them with you or talked about them when the, ca the microphones are off we do a lot of off off mic talking we also do a lot of times where we're tired a lot of times there is a huge break in between when we've recorded so we don't really generally remember every episode because this is number 18 so wow 18, i can't believe so we've been what, doing 18 uh, at weeks an hour of this. hour long yeah so what 100 and, 180 hours no 18 no no hours. no <laughs> There's something wrong with your math. 18 hours. It wouldn't be 18 hours because the first ones were half hours. I guess so. that's true. So, but ru roughly, maybe, roughly, roughly, um, may maybe, maybe all told, six at least 16 hours of content. So, so with that being said, that you may may get a little bit of a extra in this. Uh, uh, you know, and the the point is is of this podcast is that this is the three a.m. conversation, <laughs> and you can have a three a.m. yeah at any time you can have a three a.m. conversation, and um and and you know Paul and I would shoot a whole day shooting, and then we'd end up talking for an hour or two an or hour? four, <laughs> and, and not go it's to like, bed till it's five a.m. Like five in the morning. It's five in the morning. It's like five in the morning really? again. <laughs> Damn it! So you know. So that's really kind of the the uh, I would say the catalyst of the whole podcast is that um, Paul and I have these kind of rambling conversations after or during our work. 
Right. And we figured, um, just record them. Why not just start recording them? And that's that's basically it. So again, you know, this is a this is a new process. Uh, this is a new this is a a new vo so you know a, a new breed of podcast. Flying by the seat of their pants, by, by the seat of our Bib Fortuna. Bib Fortuna. Uh, and uh, Just bib it. I like the Fez. I guess he's a Doctor Who, of course. Bow no, tie uh, and Fez. I, uh, uh, gravity what did Falls. Say? That oh, Gravity the, Falls? That explains the pig. Oh, the pig. Yes, there's a pig with him. The, oh, okay. Child, Excellent. That's as, just as a pig. So I, you know, I'm jealous of Dylan because Dylan is getting a lot of action I with think his. It's the seat. Maybe if you switch seats. You know, I think he's got the hot seat. <laughs> You know, I'm like I'm I'm like kind of blocked off. Or stick somewhere. of butter is back. Uh, this is no no. This is a. Uh, it's not just a stick of butter. It is a gourmet. No, not gourmet. What was it? It was a uh, not haunted. It was a uh, not um, it, elaborate stick. Elaborate bowl of butter. A uh, something bowl of butter. Uh, a kind of bowl of butter. Rewind back to the beginning nicer. of this podcast. Yeah. And find out. Just pretend I said the right thing. So, you moment. know, it's funny that you, you brought up about how we repeat things, and there's yeah. actually a behind-the-scenes tidbit of one of the episodes where we talked about me being the big spoon in one of the upcoming episodes of Cinema Insomnia. Yes. And we talked about it three times. In the same <laughs> in podcast? The, in the same podcast. Did you just drop it and when the, you edited it? Well, the reason, the reason being was the first time we talked about it, somebody forgot to hit the record button who was in charge of the, the record. And, uh, uh, I don't so, know who that could have been. So we, we, uh, we talked about it. And then it wasn't recorded. Mm -hmm. And then we re then we recorded again and tried to reiterate everything that we said. Yes. And then I think we ended up saying it twice because on top of it we were tired. Yeah. And that was when we were taking Aaron back to the airport and we were we were beat. A lot of these are recorded and when even, we were really tired. And Aaron's in the back of the seat making fun of us, going, "I think we've already talked about this several times." <laughs> but uh, yeah, that was uh, that was edited out so that uh, you know. Dixie's getting I, the cash box obnoxious. here. Dixie, grab my cash box. I don't know if that's... Can we do that on yeah, radio? Can you say can that? On the air? I'm going to spend all your money. That's oh what she said. <laughs> she's going to make her shower pennies she's a again. Bridezilla. She's, she's going to spend all my gonna money. She's going to sit over there and she's going to flick pennies at her head. Uh, she's going to flick pennies and yeah. make it rain again. Uh, so we, since we interviewed Dylan, I'm going to I'm gonna toss this over here. Like, Kyra, my daughter, is sitting here with her, her, her furry... Um, she's got a furry creation. Uh, she's got a whole uh, furry character. Hey, hey, she, Kyra. Um, hi. <laughs> Something, yeah. Um, I am a fursuit maker. I own Little Rue Creations, and I make and sell custom things. I have some pre-made things that are for sale here today. Tell them about the costume. Is a a fursuit, which is an anthropomorphic character, who is um he's he's a hybrid. Thank you so much. Now, now make Riley say hi. Because Riley's here too, but she's just playing video games. These are both Paul's spawn, Paul's offspring. If you could just keep those pants Welcome on. Welcome to Chili's. And, and what do you do here? I make money. I'm afraid to ask how. I sell crap. That's that's the Sanders motto. I sell crap. Sell crap. Mm -hmm. I think, I think we have t-shirts. We have t-shirts for now. I sell t -shirts. crap. T-shirts. <laughs> we got buttons, t-shirts. Um, so uh, we, um, yes, we, we're all selling our crap today, but it's a family yeah. affair. We got the Sanders we're, clan. We're selling the McCraps. <laughs> yes. <laughs> we got the Sanders clan, the Lobo clan, you know, Dixie Lobo, Dylan Lobo, Mr. Lobo. You know, Ryan, Kai, Sanders, Paul Sanders, everyone's here. Everyone's here. Why aren't you here? You should be here. Yeah. Well, you should be Hop here. Hop in your TARDIS. And yes. Here. Get in your TARDIS. We're talking to you, Doctor Who. Who? Uh, get in your TARDIS. <laughs> Another Paul responds. Um, the TARDIS right across There's the TARDIS right across from, across so, from know, us. They should be just, just coming out of that. Yeah. You know, yeah. They, they, they've heard the podcast. That the guy future, with the bow tie and comes if back. The door opens up and people come out. We know that they heard the podcast, right? right? That's how Stephen Hawking did it, right? I think so. He threw a party for time travelers and didn't tell anyone until after the event. Right, and then whoever showed up. And then, he, but nobody showed up to his party, so he knew that. Well, maybe, that maybe it was lost in translation. But but he doesn't believe in what is that? Uh, where is there? Well, he didn't. Anyway. Well, he didn't. He does. <laughs> he, he's dead now. But he doesn't believe in 
we didn't believe in alternate or timelines. So mm. he he so he didn't believe in that uh, theory where there are multiverses where you know there's the one version where Stephen Hawking is there throwing a party where nobody shows up, and there's the other version of the universe where there's a, all the time travelers show up. Yeah. Anyway, and then of course there's probably what some universe where you know just Doc Brown shows up. And then there's some universe where Dixie oh, and Kyra Dixie. are doing hi. this podcast. What's happening? Are you looking for something? No. Why are you over here? Do, do, do. Bored and lonely. Dixie is bored and lonely. This is terrible. Well, we've learned that if you do a podcast, you make a lot of sales. Yeah. So maybe you should be over here podcasting with us. I could podcast for I mean, a minute. People you request, okay, no, no, you're people, fine. I'm just people in request on you. you to be on yeah, here. So. People yeah. People really want Dixie. Why do you think they want Dixie on the show so much? Because it's like a rarity. Cause, Cause, I don't like to do it. Is it is it like seeing a <laughs> unicorn? Yeah, I think that's what it is. Is it the rare of the rare? Is it like seeing unicorn shit? That's. I mean, <laughs> I feel like it, it might be Should more we... likely to see unicorn shit than an actual unicorn. Do you know what unicorn McShits are? <laughs> Sounds delicious. <laughs> that's just like an egg McMuffin with glitter on it. <laughs> I, I realized something, like I just made an observation at my table that I've been like fake smiling at every person that walks by and my face hurts. hurts. <laughs> and I'm like, wow, that's like, that's not a problem I, I feel like I've ever had, but I've been trying to make sales and I have such a vicious resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> that I'm I'm working really hard the cheek That's muscles. hard to say vicious resting bitch face. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I need a t-shirt that says yeah, that. Yeah. Well, and then I'm sorry underneath like I well, I'm aware of the problem. I'm working I'm sorry on it. I'm should be on the back. I always yeah. look I always look tired and I always feel like I have to kind of be a, a little more up, you know, try to yeah. be up because I hate when people come up and go, "Oh, Mr. Lobo, are you okay? Hey, do, you, do you need to lie down? Are you all right?" <laughs> do you need to lie down? I mean, come on. I I'm here to, I want you guys to be having fun. I don't want you to think that Mr. Lobo's miserable, so... Um, I, mean, I think you should just make looking tired like part of your thing. I mean, I thought it was, but You're they're an not getting it. Yeah, but, yeah they're um, worried. And now, you know, when we did uh, RetroCon, I mean, uh, we did two shows, back, two two big conventions back-to-back. -back. At RetroCon, we were all like... Everyone we, there was, was like, half asleep. People sleeping at the table, or they mm -hmm. look grumpy. So that's something to literally, you know, if you're going to do a show and you have to be behind the table. You, you need really, a lot of cocaine. Yeah. yeah. Keep cocaine. everybody out. Alf, Alf will come and bring cocaine. <laughs> oh, oh, Willie. <laughs> okay, ready to party. Hide um, your cats. So, uh, uh, yeah. Uh, so but, you know, really, though, if you feel like you don't have enough energy, don't maybe, show up. maybe get a friend <laughs> to watch your table for an hour and take a nap or something because it, it really will put people off if they if you look miserable they not, they will not want to buy from you that's why there's always like a 20 foot radius around Savini's table oh <laughs> no that's because he actually yells at them oh, I guess that's true. if they don't buy stuff I uh, I heard actually that and, and I like Tom Savini um, uh, but Tom he's been on the show Tom, he has been on on he was on the Mr. Mr. Lobo show? does, does oh. monster Mr. Bash. Best monster bash. 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 Yeah. You tricked him. Uh, well, I you tricked he, him into I being. I didn't trick him. He just show. thought we were officially involved with Monster Bash doing the vid uh -huh. video. But because um, uh, we were talking about Monster Bash's birthday, correct. And then at a certain point, he realized that we were just filming for ourselves. And, and told then, us to kind of like. And then he was like, "Okay, let's wrap this last up, question. guys." <laughs> um, but uh, you know, Tom Savini and I have been friends for a while. We've watched his grandkid lots of times. Who was charming? Yeah. Uh, uh, and James. James. And 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 so you know, but Tom Savini has got the rep. He's got that rep of being an a-hole. Kind of cranky. Kind of cranky. Kind of cranky. Let's, let's and, keep it nice. Uh, kind of cranky. Kind of cranky at shows, uh, but you know he's a legend and he's earned his crankiness, I yeah. guess. And, and that's kind of part of I mean, his, his his style, right? Having sat at this table for like only two hours with yeah. vicious resting bitch face, yeah. I, I definitely identify with, with Tom, Tom Savini a little, more. A little bit. Yeah. yeah. I, well, but the other side of it is that I, I heard recently that he has some kind of um, he has something. He has a he, you know we all have a little cocktail going on inside of us, and he has a medical reason that that He's adds cranky. adds to the crankiness. And yeah. sometimes you don't know the full story. Man. You don't know the full story. Well, it was kind of the story that he was giving us too, where he was he worked he was in uh, Vietnam and all that other stuff too. So all that adds into yeah, his personality. Yeah, he's got a little PTSD, I'm sure. 
Um, well, I mean, he was he was a photographer, right? I yeah. Mean, it was his yeah. job to look at dead people. Yeah, yeah, it was his job to look at dead people, and that will do something to you. Uh, and uh, before we talk more about looking at dead people, uh, we're gonna one of my favorite subjects. We're gonna go to my. <laughs> we're gonna go to what? Speaking of dead people, let's go to our sponsor. Uh, cinema insomnia. I mean, not cinema insomnia. Ooh, Ooh yeah. boy, sleepless nights of insomnia here from live from Williamsport. But not live. But not live. But but live. But not live. But the live. Mi- the Mick Shitty episode uh, from Williamsport <laughs> Comcast. Uh, we're we're gonna flush something, and we'll be right back. Sylvester Stallone became a superstar when he made Rocky. Years before fame and fortune, he was broke, hungry, and living in a bus station. For 200 bucks, he took off all his clothes and made an X-rated movie, The Italian Stallion. In a recent Playboy interview, Stallone made this comment. It was to do that movie around someone, because I was at the end, the very end of my rope. See the film that Stallone and his attorneys are powerless to stop, The Italian Stallion. Rated X, no one, under 18 admitted, and that's the law. I think this is the final, but I think we may be over. Are, are we be, not sure what this segment, segment of the show? Is, we've broken so many times for, for sales and whatnot that I've kind of lost count. I mean, that's I really... One, one segment was seven minutes. So. I mean, that's really a good reason to have a weird show is that people want to buy stuff. Yeah. And, you know, this is an odd episode. We had the whole whole fam damnly on here. That we had the whole uh, fam, Damley, uh, Rye, Every Kai, single, Dylan, uh, Dixie. Everybody got if, to speak. Uh, Mr. Lobo, Paul. We need the cat. Nerdcore. Garbage cat wasn't here. Garbage cat. <laughs> and, Nerdcore and was here. Miss Mittens was not here. Miss Mittens does never comes to conventions because she hates these people. People, th- she's very, he hates the fans. She's and awful. They try to steal her. They try to take they her take leaves. Parts of her. Yeah, they're horrible. So she she hates them. She thinks they're just a bunch of nerds, and she's mean. Well, she's not wrong. <laughs> she's not wrong. So so you're saying uh, that, that that Miss Mittens is the Tom Savini of cinema? And yeah, cinema. yeah. So we don't bring her. Yeah, uh, we, she maybe if we can get her to get a table all to herself. <laughs> then at least she won't be bringing our table down. <laughs> and it's empty. <laughs> it's just an empty chair behind. It. <laughs> a little sign that says Miss we'll Mittens. Be back. <laughs> All right, so she's in the bar. She's in the bar, right? That's like, uh, when I uh, it's like see, Joe Bob uh, Briggs. Yeah, Joe Bob or or uh, Ted Ramey. Ted Ramey, just oh my just God. go to the bar. It's always the it's always the panel, like the the big poster that's got his face on it, and then there's no man there and no merch to buy. He doesn't even bother showing up to to put things on his table. I was so heartbroken. I'm sorry. If you're hearing this, Ted Ramey, Ted you Ramey, broke my heart. You broke my wife's heart. But luckily I could pick, I got to pick up the pieces. <laughs> um, so uh, we got to hear from Dixie Delamorto, Lobo. That should make a that should make a whole sect of fans happy. happy yes, now. absolutely. Happy I, I think now. it's a good apology for the show that you did by yourself. <laughs> this <laughs> makes up by by having one less person. We have Four extra people. Four extra people. (laughs) Uh, Yes, I had a stop to count, too. And it's an up episode, you know? I mean, you've heard us at our best, and you've heard us at our worst. Uh, You certainly heard Paul at his worst. (laughs) (laughs) What do you mean by that? Uh, But, you know, we're we're actually on an upswing, you know? There's a lot of interest in cinema insomnia right now. There's a lot of interest, uh, a lot of night people saying a lot of nice things about the podcast. People, people buying DVDs, buying merch, supporting us on Patreon. Crap we, ton of people just laughing at that Bib Fortuna. Laughing at Bib Fortuna. I should be charging just for them. Yes, to laugh a look. The, maybe, yeah, maybe yeah. five cents a look. Five cents. Mm-hmm. I'll guaranteed laugh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a little paper bag with Bib Fortuna in it. One look, five One cents. Look. <laughs> Pop it out. Titter, titter, titter. <laughs> All right, here's your five cents. <laughs> um, so uh, we're not sure exactly again how much show you got, but we hope you enjoyed what you've got. Uh, we certainly enjoyed uh, our time here at Williamsport Comic Con. Thank you to Tracy and Joe totally. for inviting us, putting us up in this lovely hotel. How about this? Plug? Giving us how many tables did they give us? One, two, three. three four. I might have had four. I didn't know. Because the guy right? next to us, I didn't know if we could have, have I don't know. space or not, so I didn't. Giving us table space, uh, uh, treating us so good. Uh, allowing me to bring my kids. Allowing, I didn't want to bring them, but yeah, he, he, I had he forced to you them. to bring your kids. Forced sure, you to spend really. some time with your kids. Uh, how about a quick plug? Uh, if you're in the Williamsport area, go to Isle of Comics. And, Absolutely. Uh, That's a great the, idea. Maybe we should make a sponsor spot for them. There you go. Mm-hmm. Uh, Isle of Comics, ladies and gentlemen, your hometown comic book shop. Uh, uh, Dixie, you got one more thing to say? 
No, you just shake your head. Yeah. You don't want to say anything. You have anything to say to Ted Raimi? No. <laughs> you have anything I think to she... say to, to Joe Bob Briggs or Lou Ferrigno? Lou no. Ferrigno is somewhere in this building, I heard. heard. Is that true? Lou Ferrigno is sassy. <laughs> He's very nice to the, the other vendors around him. Yeah, he doesn't, have to he say. doesn't dress too bad either. Yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. This guy. No. We've I been had telling a, people that, that he was formerly. Formerly Lou Ferrigno. <laughs> formerly Lou Ferrigno, and I goes by Mr. Lobo. <laughs> when I saw Lou Ferrigno, I walked up and I said, I love you on King of Queens. <laughs> <laughs> and I he got says, a frown. And he said, "What do you mean by that?" <laughs> <laughs> I've already made that joke, so I already know I'm going uh, to hell yeah. for it. So. Yeah. What are you talking about, Willis? I already told oh my god! I already said, "There's no way he's going to hear it." So, uh, uh, oh right. my god! <laughs> <laughs> why? And we, while we're making sh- blind jokes, he- uh, no <laughs> blind jokes <laughs> or deaf jokes, well, we, I was- can, we can never make fun of blind <laughs> no, people oh, on no. this podcast because they will hear it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we Why can is fun, this happening? We can make fun of the Amish, can't oh, we? God. They'll never hear it. What? The Amish? The, we already I, have made fun of the Amish at the laundry. I didn't. I did. Oh, did you? Yeah, the Spanish yeah. Amish. Yeah. Were there Amish the in? No. The no, not in, not that in the would be funny. laundry. No, no. They, I don't think they use dryers. Just the dryer. Just the dryer. They use a washer. Well, maybe. No. They, they probably they they hang all their clothes washers, out to dry. They hang them out to dry, but they use the washers because it's you know. Because God said so. God said it was. God right. said so. God said you could use the washers, but not the dryer. And God also said make sure to bring dimes what if you, you needed want? to take I a mix. Candy work. cigarettes. Dixie, Mixed these up. candy cigarettes are for paying customers. They're for they're for I'm the and, and the addicts. And they're two years old. That's they're for true. the addicts. Don't let let someone buy these and find out they're two years old. You already know they're two years old. <laughs> this argument brought to you by Isle of Comics. Stop in today. Yes, Isle of Comics. <laughs> uh, yeah. Is that it, Dixie? Yeah, that's it. All right, thank you, Dixie Delamorto Lobo, artist extraordinaire, podcaster. <laughs> <laughs> Anti podcast. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> well, it looks like I, you're going to make I a sale with, with Chewy comics, down there. I love comics. Chewy. Your 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 hometown comic book store. Uh, Joe and Tracy will take care of you. They will they will hold they will hold it there. In they'll your, have a business card with their address um, on or whatever. They'll have your uh, what is that called when they hold the comics for you? Um, is there a special name for that? Yeah, it's when they hold your comics for you. Okay. Yeah. 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 Well, they'll do that, and uh, they know their stuff, and uh, they're fun, nice people. And uh, they put on a great uh, convention. They put on a great, uh, when they did Free Comic Book Day, if you mm-hmm. watch the Mr. Lobo Does Free Comic Book Day, and you will get to experience Isle of Comics uh, at its best. Yes. Yeah, and that was a wild show because I've been to Free Comic Book Day, and they don't have music guests, you know, no, playing barbecue. out there, barbecue. They had all sorts of stuff. That was a, that was a party. That was a shindig. It, it was like a block party <laughs> with, with nerds. It was wonderful. And then it rained and everybody's crap blew away. Yeah. <laughs> that was the sad part. Well, that was the rain. Well, not when I mean by everybody, I mean Mr. Lobo. My, yeah, my rain, away. my the rain did blow my stuff away, which, you know, I'm used it to happened. by now. Um, I'm, I'm, it's, it's not. It's I'm not on an God's party na- I'm on God's stuff. naughty list, so I always well, with, get. Like, I always with, get all those mis- with all those uh, Lou Ferrigno jokes, I can see why. Yeah, yeah. So I, I deserve it. But uh, thank you so much. We hope you enjoyed the the podcast. We hope you support your local comic book store, uh, support your local conventions, not your huge conglomerate conventions, but your uh, uh, your neighborhood. Uh, is there a huge convention. conglomerate? Is what there, is there? Is there a uh, Huh? Is there a blockbuster of comic book stores? <sighs> a blockbuster of comic book stores? Yeah. Not really, and not anymore. I don't think so. Uh, I mean, I, I mean, comics and comics was a pretty big chain in California, um, uh, but you know, even so, they still felt like a mom and pop. Uh, 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 but like, people bought their comics like at Tower Books and stuff like that. I guess. I guess. Back, I mean, you can buy them at the. You know? I can't drop that because we just said don't buy from these people. Now I'm about to say, hey, you can go buy them at. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or uh, what is it? Uh, or go no, there. I just stopped myself. Oh, you stopped yourself. <laughs> but don't buy your comics. Don't buy your comics uh, second, unless you have no child. choice. Unless you're under duress. Uh, try if you can support your your local comic book stores because a comic book store isn't just a comic book store. A They're com- people too. They are people, but it's a it's a cultural center. You know, when you're, there are not a lot of places 
where people can go. Uh, young people, uh, people with unusual uh, interests, you know, um, there needs to be places that people can go and gather and talk and meet and imagine and dream. And, um, you know, there are not a lot of public spaces that, that, that uh, accept our kind. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, it, it used to be in the, in the 60s, we had the head shops, you know, with the lava lamps and the black light posters. And the heads. And, and, the, and, the, and the water pipes. And, and when the head shops got shut down, they all turned into comic book stores. <laughs> so a comic book store is a cult- counterculture shop. It is a place where you're going to find your subculture people. It's going to be a place where you find your artists. Give me one second here. We got Rocky here. Will you say? Will you say Adrian? Yo, Adrian. Wow. We got Rocky to say Yo, Adrian. Is that like Rocky for Rocky, or is it like Rocky to Rocky? Which tra- Which Rocky are you? I'm in Rocky Four. Rocky Four. Like you're actually in Rocky that- Four. Now, no, was I'm just that, dressed up as Rocky. Is that Dolph Lundgren? Okay. Was Dolph Lundgren? Who was the bad guy? Yeah, Dolph L- Drago. Yeah, and you. And my real name is Baron Knot. Uh, wow, we got a little Rocky a little here. Rocky with a little lower. Yeah, lower you you speak a lot uh, more refined than <laughs> Sylvester no. Stallone. Uh, I assume that's his brother, right? <laughs> yeah, mm. they're just buddies. Awesome. So, uh, what did you, you think of Creed? Yeah, I've seen it, but I have. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it was a pretty good movie, and but not as good as any of the Rockies. Okay. There's your official review of from from Rocky Junior here from about Creed. About Creed. Apollo, which is about Apollo. Yes. I haven't heard of that movie. Is yeah. it about Apollo? Yeah. Oh, Apollo Creed. What is it? Oh, give him the mic. Adon- it's about Apollo's son, Adonis Creed. Oh, it's about Apollo's son. Yes. Oh, I I didn't know about it's this. Awesome. It's, a good movie. it's good, huh? He's fighting Dolph Lundgren's son in Creed Two, aka. Um, Ivan Drago Jr. Ivan Drago Jr. Wow. So the Rocky saga continues. How wonderful. Well, thank you so much. Rocky I, I, wasn't so Rocky. I learned so much more about Rocky. I was too bu- so busy watching Star Wars that I missed all the Rockies. He, why would you watch Star Wars instead of Rocky? Rocky's a lot better. So. Okay. All okay, right. Uh, I think it's time for you to move along. I, I think I, I, I'm about to get boxed, I think, right now. Uh, boom, boom. What, he wants to say, say one Rocky thing. wants to say one more thing. Last thing I'll let you talk about. If Sylvester Stallone is ever listening to this, I like all your movies. I can guarantee one thing. Even Sylvester Rhinestone? Stallone, even yeah. Rhinestone? I can guarantee one thing. Sylvester Stallone is not listening to this podcast. <laughs> Over. <laughs> See ya. So we have fun. a Rhinestone fan Rhinestone. here. At the, at, uh, here, Dolly Parton and Sylvester Stallone fan uh, here at, at, you know, so it takes all kinds to make a comic. Well, at least you went with Rhinestone and not Italian Stallion, I guess. <laughs> oh, Paul. <laughs> you know, you got to do a lot of things. You know, when you're hungry, you got to make porno. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So we were trying to wrap up here. Uh, so we're we'll... trying to wrap it up. We've got, the, we've got a crowd here, huge I, I crowd here at the Rocky table. I had to get Rocky on the air. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, he yeah. Hates yeah. Star Wars. Uh, he hates Star Wars. He's rough on Star Wars, man. He was ready to punch me with his uh-huh. boxing glove. I know. I saw that. He was winding up. Uh, all right, ladies and gentlemen, we're having so much fun. There, there, are, there are nerds of all ages here today having a blast. Except for that guy right there. Uh, and uh, we are see here. See that Rocky's down there Laughing at Bid Fortuna. And I don't oh, think that was a. Uh, I don't think that's a. It's a funny laugh. You know, Paul. Maybe like, like I don't know. Maybe, are you sure Bib Fortuna's in that box? Maybe like your lunch is in that maybe, box or something. Maybe there's maybe. McShits in that box. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. And on, on that, that note, note <laughs> we'll be seeing you next time. See you in the funny pages. You have been listening to the Sleepless Nights podcast, or should we say, podcast? Podcast. Emphasis on the odd. Our theme is by Mars Homeworld at Dead House Music. Our opening announcement is by Ophelia Necro. She does a radio show called Suicide Watch. And you could reach Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com or find me on YouTube, YouTube slash Mr. Lobo. M-I-S-T-E-R-L-O-B-O. Mr. Lobo on Facebook, Facebook slash M-R dot L-O-B-O. Or on Twitter, at Mr. Lobo, M-I-S-T-E-R-L-O-B-O. Or you can find myself, Paul Sanders, or better known as Besto TV, at Besto.TV. 
on YouTube slash Besto TV, on Twitter at Besto Prod, P R O D, and on Facebook, Besto TV. If you want to place an advertisement with this podcast, and gosh, why wouldn't you? Uh, we could be talking about you right now. Contact us, Mr. Lobo at cinemainsomnia.com. That's M R L O B O at sign C I N E M A I N S O M N I A dot com. Or support us on Patreon. Patreon supporters get to hear this podcast before anyone else and a lot of other great stuff, right, Paul? Uh, sure. <laughs> Doesn't get it better than that, right? So come join the fun at Patreon's dot com slash cinema insomnia that's patreon dot com slash cinema insomnia please stay up with us next week for another sleepless nights podcast or should we say the odd cast the best thing about being an insomniac is never having to say good night good night good night